from Singapore. I'm Galinda. Today is April the 26th, day 20th of the circuit breaker period, and it's a Sunday. I have lived in Hong Kong for 10 years in the past, and what I've learned from the culture is that on Sunday it's Yum Cha Day. So let's go, Yum Cha, Sek Dim Sum. Today I'm taking you all to go have some dim sum with me again. And this is our meal today. This is ha gao. Ha gao is steamed shrimps dumpling. And next we have wu gok. Wu gok, there you go. It's a deep fried taro dumpling puffs. Coming up next is cheng fan. This is cheng fan. And this one is wrapped with cha siu, which is roasted pork. And then I've ordered something very daring for some. And um, you just have to get over the look of it because it tastes very, very good. That is chicken feet. This one is not the traditional um, steamed chicken feet um, when you order dim sum, which is usually black bean sauce. This one was cooked in abalone sauce. So this is a step up. Mm. So last, I've ordered a nomai gai, which is um, glutinous rice wrapped in lotus leaves with chicken and mushrooms in it. And it's a very, very exciting dish. And I'll open it up now so that you can see. Um, you don't eat the, the leaves. Just open it. I'll do it with my hands because it's easier. Um, there you go. And all the deliciousness appears. Wow. We are all so bored at home and inevitably we start to spend more time on social media. I saw many people commenting and questioning whether Singapore's circuit breaker is ineffective because the numbers of the cases are still so high and increasing day by day. Imagine this, a Singaporean foreman who works side by side with a foreign worker who has COVID-19 but doesn't know it. The foreman goes home and infects his family, including his elderly parents, his wife, and his teenage children. And his two children would go out and have supper with their friends. Well, let's say two friends each. That means 10 secondary infections, at least two, would likely turn out to be life-threatening. Now multiply that by 5,000 infected foreign workers. And that would have happened if we hadn't gone into a circuit breaker. And the fact that we are seeing 20 plus community infections a day instead of 2,000 a day shows that the circuit breaker is working. There is simply no alternatives. And some are rightly asking, but how did we get here in the first place? How did the infections among foreign workers get so widespread? No doubt, the foreign workers' living conditions can be improved. But epidemiologically speaking, the key was probably not the conditions per se, but simply the communal living. But we have to remember this. Only half of the foreign worker dormitories are infected including the best equipped and designed ones. We saw how the virus spread like wildfire on one of the most advanced US aircraft carriers. If we hadn't stopped BMT, the same scenarios would have happened to our NS boys. Look, if a student brings home the virus to a condominium flat, it is most likely that the whole family will get infected because of the close proximity. When you eat together, use the same dining table, utensils, bathrooms, appliances or leisure facilities, your chances of getting the infection is very high. In fact, it has very little to do with living conditions. I would caution all the champagne socialists not to be too quick to use an 
inequality and ill treatment narrative to explain the spread. Many of these foreign workers chose Singapore over their neighboring countries and more importantly, over their own countries to come here to earn a living. They know the living conditions here in Singapore are better than many other places. And the government, to its credit, has come out strongly to help them, pledging taxpayers' money to protect their jobs, their income, and their health care needs would also be protected should they fall ill. So, don't be too quick to judge. By contrast, in India, Modi just declared shutdown within hours and let millions of his own people walk home hundreds of miles with many starving to death. So to all those who are pointing their fingers at the government, have you always cared for the foreign workers here in Singapore? Could the government have moved in earlier to lock down the dormitories or to thin them out? Well, it's easier said than done. If the government had locked down the dormitories before any signs of virus spread, they would have been accused of discrimination towards the foreign workers, of violating their human rights and so on. Now what about thinning them out? Even now, for the 7,000 essential workers living in the purpose-built dormitories, only some have been moved out. Some are being separated or relocated within other dormitories. This shows how difficult it is to accommodate 7,000 workers. Even rehousing half of 200,000 workers would mean using every scrap of space here in Singapore. And how many would complain if the unsold unit next to theirs were used for this purpose? We've got to remember that we only recently know that the virus spreads asymptomatically. Back in February, the government would have decided to treat foreign workers just like any other group. So if symptoms have developed, a testing will be done and then there will be contact tracing and isolation. Like all governments in the world, we were caught by surprise by the asymptomatic spread. The difference between Singapore and other countries is Singapore's attempt focuses on contact tracing in order to stop the spread, which is the right thing to do. But instead, people are bashing the Singapore government when they uncover the high case numbers. But actually, in other countries, there could have been hundreds of thousands of undetected cases. After all, antibody tests suggest more than 20% of New Yorkers test positive. By the way, that's also why we've changed our stances on face masks because of the new evidence on asymptomatic community spread. And the WHO has reviewed their guidelines on face masks accordingly since then. No one could have known this a few weeks ago. The idea of asymptomatic spreading is very scary and it's the worst case scenarios. It means while the medical world is racing to find a vaccine, the only hope of containment involves widespread distancing and circuit breakers. Yes, circuit breakers with an S. They are incredibly painful and the government will have to dip further into their reserves to help people through this. We all want someone to blame. But blaming the government for not predicting the future does not make the virus less scary. So let's fight this cause together as one united nation of the world. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you. I cannot tahan you very long already for this article.